Hey players, it's Josh here with Evan Carmichael, and I gotta say guys, Evan Carmichael has one of the best channels on YouTube. He kind of takes information from lots of other successful people, Steve Jobs, Jordan Peterson, Gary Vaynerchuk, and he kind of condenses it and finds a way to make it actionable so that you can take those ideas and move forward with them. So I wanna say thank you, Evan, for being here. I really appreciate it. Thanks for love, man. It's been awesome watching your channel grow and all the impact that you're having as well. So we're, we're on this mission together. This is the Just Beats. You're watching the Just Beef. For those of you guys who don't know, Evan's whole core message is believe. And I think it's such a strong and powerful message. And I think it, you know, ties into the idea of kind of improving yourself. So do you want to kind of explain what believe is all about? Yeah, I think people, one, need to believe in themselves more. So just self-confidence that the thing that you're doing is, you know, you should do it. Even if you're going to fail, like try, try, try. Believe in yourself more, even if people are putting you down. Uh, for me, though, believe is also believe in the work. Like what you are applying yourself to matters. You know, if you want to make a YouTube channel, then actually care about the process, not just I'm trying to get YouTube famous, but you care about making videos, like whatever you apply yourself to. And if you're learning to study something, you're going to have to become a doctor, like make sure you actually care about being a doctor, not because you're just trying to chase money. Uh, and then and then believe in the impact. So, you know, the work that you're doing is going to touch other people's lives in some way for the good. So, I mean, we both do that through our YouTube channel, but for people watching, the work that you're doing should mean something to somebody else, should touch their life in some way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think it's like, I think where a lot of people are is that, uh, especially the people that watch my channel, it's like they're at that position where they're trying to define who they are. Uh, they're coming into that sense of being, of, of really putting themselves out there in the world. And one of the things I talk about a lot is like, you know, it's not just a matter of being yourself, it's being your best self, finding uh, out what your best attributes are, what your best qualities, how you want to help people impact their lives and kind of putting that front and center. So I think, you know, the word that kind of pops up a lot, I think, in a lot of people's minds is success, being successful, accomplishing success. And I guess from your perspective, how, how would you say a person should define what success means? So that's a very personal thing. And what what's so exciting about your audience is this is a really important age where you need to you need to determine what is your version of success look like versus what your parents version looks like. Right. Are you going to go off and take that career that they want you to do or are you going to go off and go in your own crazy direction or start your own business. And a lot of times what, what our parents are telling us is out of love. It's like mm -hmm. they see success one way. Like success is go be a doctor. Like that's how you have success. Maybe that's how they saw success or their cultural backgrounds. But for you, success might be something else. It might be I want to be a singer or I want to be a YouTuber or I want to start my own company. That's what success looks like for you. And so at some point in your life, you have to determine when do I get to decide what success looks like for me? And that may happen now, mm -hmm. but it may happen in next year or it may happen in five years or it may have already happened five years ago. But at some point, everybody has to make that decision. And so, you know, are you going to be a 40 year old guy or girl and still listen to what your parents are telling you to do? Like at what point do you say I'm in charge of my own life and I'm going to go off and pursue my own path? And so I think everybody else has an opinion for what you should do. Your parents, your friends, the teachers, like everybody has an opinion of what you should do with your life and you need to spend some time reflecting to say, here's what I actually want to do with my life and then go give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think that, uh, you know, part of the issue is that like people spend a lot of time comparing themselves to others, especially when you're young. It's like, you know, um, you'll look at, let's say you're like, I don't know, 18, 19 years old, you're entering college, like you'll look at someone like Logan Paul, Jake Paul, these guys, and you say, well, look, they have made it big and they're huge and stuff. And, you know, maybe I like music, but I'm never going to get to that level. Or maybe I want to be a YouTuber, but I'm never going to get to that level. So I think people kind of get hung up sometimes in comparing themselves to other people that they see as successful. But I'm curious what your thoughts are on, on this idea of like studying and learning from people who are successful and people who, you know, who fail in their own right too. What is it that we can really learn from other people that are out there doing things without feeling the burden of comparing ourselves to them. So I think the importance of using comparison is as a kick forward, not down. As an inspiration to say like, here's what is possible and not I suck, I'll never get there. Mm -hmm. So you wanna look to these people with this Logan or Jake or somebody else that you look up to, Josh, you wanna have a <laughs> channel like him, right? It's, it's to kick forward. It's like, hey, look what Josh could do. Look what Jake could do. Look what Evan could do. I, I could do the same thing if I apply myself to it. Not, I'm never going to hit it at that level because it's always going to be somebody who's way further ahead than you. You know, you see some of the people on the wall behind me. Steve Jobs went off, had this huge impact. Like, I may never 
get to have that huge an impact that Steve Jobs did with Apple, but it's an inspiration. Like I can, I can try, right? It's, it's being able to pull from all these different people to help you become the best version of yourself. And I love surrounding myself with people who've done a lot more than me, not to make me feel bad about myself, but to inspire me to want to go off and do more. And I think if, if you look at any of the stories of these people, if you look at Jake or, 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 you know, if you share your story, you know, a lot of these people, they didn't start off with everything just handed to them. You know, they struggled, they failed. Mm -hmm. Like, let's go watch your very first YouTube video. Are you like, I'm sure it sucks compared <laughs> yeah. to what you're doing now, right? It's a mm -hmm. journey. You know, for me, I've done 6,000 videos almost in YouTube. And so like, you better get good at something if you've done it 6,000 times. And so it's, it's the repetition, it's the practice, it's over and over and over every day, trying to get better at whatever the thing is, if it's skateboarding or singing or basketball or whatever, the common thread with all of these people that you look up to is that they work really hard. Mm -hmm. They've invested a lot of time to make their thing go. And they may have sucked at the beginning, but they got better because they practiced. And so the message I always take from looking at any of these success stories is, they often started with fewer resources than I currently have right now. You know, a lot of these people are already, they're starting, the people watching your show already have more resources than a lot of their heroes had starting up. Mm -hmm. And so I use that as inspiration to say, if they could do it, I could do it too. And you may never have to have Steve Jobs level impact because, you know, he wasn't the greatest dad, right? Like he disowned his daughter. You know, I don't want to learn how to be a parent from Steve Jobs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I can learn how to be a parent from somebody else. And I know that's not, you know, the age group yet for where your audience is. But the point is not to be the next Jake Paul or the next Josh or the next Evan is to be the best you. And you could take a bit from each of us to say that really resonates. I'm going to use that. And so anytime I don't know what to do, the first question I ask myself is who's already done this mm -hmm. and go model their success. And I use their specific tactics, like actual steps of what they did. And I also use their stories and inspiration as a kick forward to help me do better. Yeah, I agree with that. I think for myself too, just even how I've grown my channel and, and what I've done, I've pulled a lot, I think, uh, just learning pieces from people like Mr. Rogers or the Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh. Like, those nice. are my two, you know, mentor type of uh, figures there. Um, so they've kind of really helped me shape what I want to do because I saw their path, I saw their, their level of, of success in their own right, and it helped me kind of understand what I wanted, how I was going to determine that success for myself. Uh, and for me, it's it's in helping people, you know, like that's my mission going forward there. But um, to kind of talk a little bit about too. So you have there on your right next to you, the top 10 rules for success. And uh, that's a book I, I just tapped into it, too. Um, I finished reading your one word uh, like a month ago. So I just I started reading your new one that came out. And it's like you talk about a lot of the, the people like you said, Steve Jobs and other people in that book. Right. And you kind of yeah, so go into the their stories and everything. So you want to explain a little bit what that book is about? Yeah, so the idea was I, so I have profiles on my YouTube channel every day almost. We look at a new person and what I think are their top 10 rules that you can learn from. And so I condensed them down into a book where we took the 40 most popular videos on the channel and condensed it into a book format. We don't have Thich Nhat Hanh. We have the Dalai Lama. Mm -hmm. So that one would resonate with you. Maybe Sadhguru and or like a few other yeah. spiritual <laughs> leaders. But like so it's entrepreneurs, actors, athletes, all walks of life. And the idea was to read one page a day, and on that page is gonna be two genius ideas, two of the best things that these people have ever said. And I think I think a big problem with the comparison thing really stems from uh, self-confidence. Mm -hmm. It's just from a lack of self-esteem. And so it's not being happy with where you are and your abilities and just who you are as a human. And so being around, I think that the way to have more self-confidence is to be around more self-confident people, not only to say, here are the eight steps to becoming self-confident. But if you're always confident in the videos, then just by being around you, by watching your videos, you will become more self-confident. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really healthy for people to think that they still have a long way to go, or they still have to do a lot, but they still are awesome right now and where they're at. Like it's both. It's the, I'm amazing as a human being. I have so much that I have already given and I am awesome. And I still have so much more to go. And so that's what the book does, at least for me, is I read a page a day, I learn two new things from a successful entrepreneur, and it just inspires me to want to go off and do something at a bigger level, to like make today count, to make mm -hmm. it have meaning. Yeah, and I think it's important. Like One thing I always talk about is just that the fact that everything is small steps, you know, like 
every every day is a new opportunity for you to kind of like learn something new, to tackle something new. So for myself, I'm always trying to set small daily goals, you know, like uh, maybe today's daily goal is, you know, be kinder towards people. Tomorrow's daily goal is to not beat myself up as much. And I'll try to carry that forward in, in how I approach every interaction that I have. Um, but I think where a lot of people struggle too is that like, I think we're, we're, we're focusing a lot on like, okay, I know what I want to do. Now I can go forward. I, you know, I can model my behavior there. I think where a lot of people are though is probably in the stage where it's like, they don't know what they want to do. You know, I think especially for a lot of teenagers, you know, you're kind of, let's say in high school or entering college, college, especially it's a lot of kids going to college and it's like, I'm just going to do what my parents told me to, you know, take the major my parents wanted me to take, or I'm going to take this because I think it'll give me a lot of money, but they don't really have a direction as to how they can apply themselves or what they actually want to do. So they're kind of just like floating around. So what would you say for people that are in that kind of floating stage? Yeah. First off, that's normal. Like you're not alone. (laughs) That's most people. Mm -hmm. That's everybody at some point in life. And you know what? Newsflash, like you'll be set for the next couple of years once you do figure it out and then you'll be back to another period of uncertainty. Like you're not going to be set for the rest of your life. You know, like YouTube is a thing for me right now. When YouTube dies off and something new comes along where I lose my, lose my passion, I'm going to be in a new period of, okay, what am I going to do? And the key is to experiment. And so what's your favorite sport? I'm, I'm a big wrestling fan. Wrestling. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, you might say like Hulk Hogan is the greatest wrestler of all time or the ultimate warrior or like Macho Man or whoever mm-hmm. it is. I'm going old school. Maybe yeah. this is like, <laughs> you got to go, I don't know who the new... Who John the new, Cena or one of these okay, guys. Okay, there you go. I like, <laughs> got an age gap. Um, you know, I would say that he's not the greatest wrestler of all time. Mm-hmm. You know, the greatest wrestler of all time is a manager at Starbucks mm-hmm. because he never tried to wrestle. Mm. Right? Like you and your audience, like your audience, they have t- untapped potential but they're they're good. They have blinders on and they're going down this path of becoming a doctor when really they should be a jockey, right? Or they should be a golfer or they should be something else, a YouTuber, a singer, an actor, something else. Mm -hmm. And they just don't have the exposure. I was really fortunate in that I thought I wanted to be a banker and going through high school, like I want to be a banker. I had a whole bunch of entrepreneur tendencies, selling baseball cards and going door to door and like doing a whole bunch of stuff to make money. But entrepreneurship wasn't as popular as it is right now. So I thought I wanted to be a banker. And I, I luckily met a couple of entrepreneurs in university and said, hey, join our company. And I said, okay, let's try it out. And I haven't gone back to get a real job ever since. But that was good luck. Like if I didn't meet those entrepreneurs, I would have been a banker hating my job. And that's what most people do. Most people, when they get older, they go and work for some, some job that they hate. Like they mm-hmm. wake up and they drive to a job that you hate. Like look at your parents. Do they love their life? Do they love their job? Do you want that same life for yourself? If not, you might have to take a different approach. And so if you don't know what to do, then you need to explore as much as possible. Try a bunch of different things, right? Go rock climbing once, right? Go figure skating once. Start a YouTube channel once. Like just just try something once and see. Don't put this huge pressure like this has to be my career. If I'm going to make one video, like I have to be a YouTuber after this. And if it doesn't work out, that's it. Just see, do I want to go back? It's kind of like dating. I know you talk a lot about dating on your channel. You know, you don't want to go into your first date saying, I have to marry this woman or Mm -hmm. it's over. Right? You go on a date, you see if you click, and you see, like, do I want to have a second date with her? Right. Do I want to go back? And then a third and a fourth and like it builds. And so it's the same thing. You have to go on a whole bunch of dates. You have to try out a whole bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. And so the best thing that I would give advice to somebody in that situation is say yes to everything. Now, within a moral compass and, you know, not maybe everything, but like say yes to things that push your comfort zone a little bit. The things you never thought that you would like, but just try it once and then just prove yourself that you're going to like this or you don't like it. And then. The acid test just becomes, do I want to go back and do it? As an example, salsa dancing is one for me. Uh, in one year, I did mountain climbing or like rock climbing, uh, snowboarding and salsa dancing. And the rock climb, I didn't think I'd like it. And I, and I didn't like it. I, you know, I got the, the harnesses in me <laughs> and like, and I'm afraid of heights. It's like, but I said yes. Like, yeah. go, like, try it. Say yes. And so I tried. I didn't like it. The snowboarding I'd liked and I got obsessed for like a year And I won every day and I I was getting jumps and I was getting pretty good. And then I lost my passion. And the salsa dancing is something that I've continued for over a decade. Now, on paper, 
I'm tall. I don't speak Spanish. You know, I take huge steps. I didn't grow up with salsa music. So it's hard for me to pick up. Like on paper, it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. But I went and I just, I liked it. I just liked it. It's like, you know what? I'm going to go back to another class. And I got better and I improved and I eventually invested it and then bought the largest salsa dancing company in North America. I met my wife through salsa dance. Like all these great things happened to me just because I said yes to going to that first class. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't know what you want to do, just say yes. Say yes to all these things and be open to the experience of something wonderful happening that you want to go back and do it again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing for me. It's like when I started doing YouTube, uh, I, I didn't go in with the intention of I want to do YouTube. I kind of just wanted to uh, originally I wanted to do like video production and, and do like commercials and things for people. And my first time doing that, I ended up showing up late and I totally messed it up. So they, they're like, oh, sorry, we're not going to work with you. So it was like eight in the morning. I'm sitting there with my video camera equipment. I'm in some park and I'm like, well, this kind of sucks. This vision that I had of what I wanted to do totally didn't work out. Or, or I mean, it might have worked out if I kept trying maybe. But like the first time, you know, if, if, if something sucks in the first time, you immediately feel like I don't want to do it again. But maybe that's not the right approach. But for me, instead, I just sat down and said, you know what? I'm just going to set up my camera and record a YouTube video. Record a video just kind of talking about failure. And I did that and people liked it. And then I just continued doing the YouTube path. So, you know, it, it kind of was unexpected for me too to kind of take this YouTube journey. Um, and it all started for me just like, all right, you know what? I'm just going to set the camera up and do it and try it and see if I like it. So just doing something that was unexpected. You know, I think a lot of times we want to follow a very expected path and just mm -hmm. do what we know or what looks safe. But sometimes it's a matter of just putting yourself out there. Like, like you said with salsa, you know, I'm sure you didn't look at salsa in the beginning and think this is something I'm really going to enjoy, <laughs> you know? But. Yeah, and and expect to suck, I think, mm -hmm. is so important. This is a hard thing because you know what looks good. Mm -hmm. Like somebody watching, I you know, I think everybody watching your channel should try to start a YouTube channel. Should yeah. make one video. Like make a video. Just try it. Like stop making it this big thing and just go out and make one video and upload it and see what happens. See how it makes you feel. Mm -hmm. But you're gonna suck. Like you're not gonna be Josh, what Josh is now. You're gonna be what Josh was and sitting in the park doing his first video, right? And it's hard because you know what looks good. You've seen tons of YouTube videos. You know what YouTubers look like. And then you can't replicate it because you don't have the skills or the talent yet. And so that discourages a lot of people. Like, mm -hmm. oh, that really sucks. So now I'm never going to be a YouTuber. Well, again, go back to their journey. They started from a similar place to you. So everybody should try to do a YouTube channel and try to do a business and try to do a whole bunch of things and expect to suck at the beginning. The acid test is not did it work and did I get a good result. It's how did it make you feel? Yeah. I didn't go to my first salsa class and was an expert salsa dancer coming out of it. I did a level one, very basic, how to do a turn, like super easy stuff. Yeah. But I felt great. Like that was pretty cool. I want to go. I want to do that again. So you make a video, expect to suck. There's no pressure. It's like, you know what? I kind of like that. I like filming myself. I, I had something to say. I'm going to upload and see what happens. Right. And so don't expect to get results. Expect to get terrible results. Expect to get no results. Just do you want to go back and do it again? Look for that feeling of, yes, I want to do it second time. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, a one of the main fears that I think people have in taking that approach is is that, you know, there's always going to be people around you that are just like, you're going to fail, you're going to suck at it, you're wasting your time. So how do you kind of deal, how would you suggest someone deals with that kind of like negativity when you're starting something new, when people just don't believe in you and they just think they just are expecting you to fail? So it comes from a couple directions. Uh, one, it comes from just haters. It comes from people who they don't like you. They don't like their idea. They don't like what you're doing. Oftentimes that comes from their own insecurity. It's mm. like they took their shot. They tried to do something. It didn't work. And so now nobody around them can have success. They tried to do a YouTube channel and because it didn't work out. Now you're not allowed to have success on your channel, right? So you get, you get those people in your life. And for that, I always look at, okay, this person, first of all, it's hard. Like you're getting beat you're already maybe not having the highest confidence and then these people are beating you down with that. To step out of the emotion and get now into the practicality, I think, has this person who's criticizing me done what I'm trying to do? Mm -hmm. Like, has this person built a huge YouTube channel of what I want to try to do or become a great salsa dancer or be a great entrepreneur? If not, then their advice is meaningless. Like, I should be doing the opposite of what they're saying. Yeah, right? Yeah. So that's for the haters. And, and we all have those kinds of people in our lives. The second part comes from people who are not hating. They just see success differently. Like the first question, like our parents, they mm -hmm. may say, well, Josh, you're never going to have success on YouTube. Like, why do that? Go be a doctor. Right. 
And it comes from a place of love. It's not from hate. It's like they don't want to see you fail. They don't want to see you not have an income source. They don't want to see you still kind of bumming around at 35 without a direction. Mm -hmm. So it comes from their definition of success. And so for those people, one is just having a conversation. Say like, I really want to try this. I really want to give this my best effort and showing how important it is to you. And then two, if they still don't get it, then I'm limiting my exposure. So I don't want to, if it's my parents, I don't want to talk to my parents about that. I'm going to talk to them about other things. And then I supplement. So you want to eliminate all the negativity as much as possible from your environment. The haters you want to eliminate, your parents or friends, you know, limit exposure to. Mm -hmm. And now that there's extra space, you fill it with things that build you up. So like if watching Josh's channel gives you more confidence, makes you feel bolder, makes you want to go off and do something with your life. Great. Josh has tons of videos. Like start your day every day with a Josh video, right? Now Josh is a part of your life. And the same thing, whether it's a book or another YouTube channel or podcast or music, like whatever the thing is that gets you feeling bold, unstoppable, you know, everybody has felt that feeling. So whatever that is, put it into your daily routine, like start mm -hmm. your day with that. And then if you're around that on a consistent basis, then it starts to drown out the noise of the haters and the people who are telling you that you can't do it. Uh, and so... I don't think people have a good enough environment around them. I think most people wake up like an accident and just kind of fall into their day. I think people will complain about the people in their lives, but not enough people make a change. And so I've learned some of the greatest lessons in my life from people I've never met just by watching YouTube videos and speeches and interviews of them. And so if you just reverse engineer and think about what is it that gets me feeling bold and confident and unstoppable and then do that every single morning, your life will... If you did that every day, your life in one year would not be recognizable from where you are right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's that's what you do in your channel too. I mean, you kind of pull in all the best kind of like you also have that uh, ENT espresso uh, type of thing where you pull in kind of these morning motivational things to start your day off. And I think I love that series. It's such a you know wonderful series. So I, I I think I want a lot of people on my channel to kind of know that hey, if you guys watch me for inspirational or motivational stuff like you have to be checking out evan's channel too so do you want to kind of explain the kind of content you put out on your channel yeah it's for people who aspire to do big things mm -hmm. and i started only in the entrepreneurship field so we'd only be profiling different entrepreneurs like steve jobs and Elon musk and those guys uh, but it's expanded now so it's people who are athletes and singers and entertainers and every day we have three new videos that go live on the channel so it's a ton of content you could pick the series that you like better you like the espresso somebody might like the top 10 you know there's a bunch of different series that you can pull from and i make the channel selfishly for myself just what we talked about i want to be around people who are doing big things in mm -hmm. a positive way right and so i learn from the videos it inspires me to want to do more and then i share it with my audience and people who are watching are of the same mindset. Like they want to make today count. They want to learn something. They want to be inspired and do great things. And so if you, if somebody watching has aspirations to be a mega success, then they'll resonate with a lot of my content. Um, but it all, like it almost doesn't matter. I think for anybody watching, you have all found the thing before that has made you feel bold and unstoppable. Just do that. Like if, if hugging your cat on the balcony and meditating in the morning is a thing that like gets you fired up, mm -hmm. great. Like hug your cat every morning on the balcony and say your prayer or whatever the <laughs> thing is. Like no judgment. Whatever yeah. the thing is that gets you, it doesn't have to be it's, – it's, it's just yourself. It doesn't have to be with anybody. It doesn't have to be public. It's the thing that you do for yourself five minutes every single morning, ten minutes, whatever it is, to get you feeling bold and unstoppable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's great, man. I, I love what you do. I love your channel. And I uh, just want to say also congrats on hitting a million subscribers a while back. Like, you're just killing it out there. And I think it's uh, it's it's awesome to be able to have you here on my channel to talk about uh, these kind of topics and stuff. And like I said, I lo I'm loving your book, guys. I'm going to put the link for it in the description below. So definitely check out uh, Emma Carmichael's book. Um, but yeah, I mean, thank you for jumping on and, and, and talking about these things. I, I hope that, you know, my audience can really like really dive deep in. Guys, watch this video a few times if you have to, because I think Evan put out a lot of good info there. And, uh, you know, there's a lot, lot out there to learn, a lot of positive people out there that um, can just inspire you in lots of different ways. So thank you so much, Evan, for being a part of this. I really appreciate it, man. Happy to, man. And, and I love what you're doing. And I wish... I wish I was a teenager again and I could consume <laughs> your content. Like, I wish this existed for me. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I went to libraries, you know. 
in in high school, I'm I'm 38 years old this year, mm-hmm. so I'm 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 the first millennial. Like 1980s when I was born, it's the first year millennial. So I'm like yeah. the grandfather millennial. But I remember having to go to libraries to get content. Mm-hmm. Right? You guys are so lucky. Like you have a guy like Josh who's pumping out great content every single day, giving you relevant news, tactics, ideas to help you build a better life, and take advantage of it. Use it. And and I'm just I'm honored to be here, man. And I'm I'm super pumped about the mission you're on and, and the huge impact you're having too. Awesome. Thank you so much again, Evan. And guys, uh check out Evan's links. I'll put them over here on the end card. Uh check out the link for his book in the description below. And uh, on that note, guys, I'll see you guys next time. As always, love, peace, and believe. <laughs>